Hey, welcome to Tabletop Skirmish Games and part 13 of our How to Play Warcry series. I'm Lee and in this video we'll be going through Dungeon Terrain. In part 12 we went through the Dungeon Battles and the Infernal Forge Floor Battlefield Layout. In this video we'll go through all the terrain pieces that are included in the Warcry Catacombs and look at each one in detail, going through all the rules associated with them. Let's start with the dungeon walls. Dungeon battlefields have areas referred to as dungeon walls. A dungeon wall is outlined with a thin red line and includes the area enclosed within. Dungeon walls are a type of terrain feature that uses the following rules. While not represented by scenery models, dungeon walls are terrain features that are treated as obstacles. Dungeon walls are not treated as the battlefield floor. This means that fighters, treasure tokens, objective markers and other terrain features cannot be placed upon them. Because dungeon walls are obstacles, fighters may receive the benefit of cover from them. And we covered this in our previous video, which was part 11 of the How to Play Warcry series, where we went through terrain and cover. The next rule for dungeon walls is movement. Fighters cannot move through dungeon walls. This includes models that can fly. The only exception to this is when a fighter uses the float through wall ability. And we go through abilities in the next part of this video series. The next rule for dungeon walls is visibility. When determining visibility, lines drawn across dungeon walls are treated in the same way as those drawn through terrain features, meaning that dungeon walls block visibility. We went through visibility in part three of the series, which was the general rules and distance. In this image, the shroud blade is visible to the immolator as a straight line can be drawn from a part of the shroud blade to a part of the immolator. In this second example, the shroud blade is not visible to the immolator as a straight line cannot be drawn between the two fighters without it passing through the dungeon wall. The next rule for the dungeon walls is measuring distances. Distances cannot be measured through dungeon walls. Instead, players must measure around them. And now the final rule for dungeon walls is regarding objectives. If a straight line drawn from the center of an objective marker to the closest point on a fighter's base crosses over a dungeon wall, that fighter does not count when determining control of that objective. Next, we'll take a look at dungeon doors. A dungeon battlefield will have one or more dungeon doors. Dungeon doors are mounted on a base that is treated as the battlefield floor. There are two types of dungeon doors. These are open dungeon doors, and sealed dungeon doors. These doors are open and these doors are sealed. Dungeon doors are obstacles that use the following additional rules. Let's start with the rules for the open dungeon doors. Open dungeon doors use the rules for doors which we went through in the core book during part 11, The Terrain. 
There's one exception to this, and that is that no fighters are restricted from moving through them. Although the Catacombs rulebook does not expand on that, I take this to mean that fighters with the mount or beast room mark can now move through the dungeon doors. Next, let's look at the additional rules for the sealed dungeon doors. Sealed dungeon doors are treated as dungeon walls for the purposes of movement, visibility, measuring and objectives. And we went through these previously. This means that fighters are not visible to each other through a sealed dungeon door even if the model itself has gaps in it. Some abilities can open a sealed dungeon door. If a sealed dungeon door is opened, remove the model from play. Then treat the doorway it was placed upon as an open dungeon door for the rest of the battle. With the doors taken care of, now let's move on to pits. A dungeon battlefield may have one or more areas referred to as pits. Pits will be clearly outlined on the map in the setup rules for the dungeon battlefield on which they appear. Pits are a type of terrain feature that use the following rules. Pits are not treated as the battlefield floor. This means that fighters, treasure tokens, objective markers and other terrain features cannot be placed upon them. Pits are treated as the air. This means that fighters can jump over them. However, a fighter that jumps over a pit suffers impact damage at the end of that move action. This represents the fighter being scorched by the heat rising from the lava below. A fighter that finishes a move action with the center of their base on a pit is immediately taken down. Edges of the battlefield floor that touch a pit are treated as the edge of a platform. This means that fighters attacked near a pit may fall. We covered the falling rules in part 8 with the move actions. If a fighter within half an inch of a pit is said to have fallen, they are immediately taken down. If a fighter carrying treasure is taken down on a pit before the fighter is removed from play, the players roll off. The winner of the roll off picks a point on the battlefield floor within three inches of the fighter and within one inch of the edge of that pit and places the treasure token there. Now let's move on to the bridges. A dungeon battlefield may have one or more bridges. There are two types of bridges. These are metal bridges and wooden bridges. Let's look at the movement rules for bridges. Bridges are treated as the battlefield floor. The long edges of a bridge are treated as the edge of a platform. If a fighter with the centre of their base on a bridge is said to have fallen, they are immediately taken down. The next rule for bridges is regarding objectives and treasure tokens. Objectives and treasure tokens cannot be placed on bridges. If a fighter on a bridge drops treasure, the players roll off. The winner of the roll-off picks a point on the battlefield floor 
within three inches of the fighter and within one inch of the edge of that pit and places the treasure token there. The final rule for bridges is regarding weakened and collapsed bridges. If a fighter ends a move or disengage action with the centre of their base on a metal bridge, after that action, roll a dice. On a 1, the bridge is said to be weakened. Place a token next to the bridge to represent this. Wooden bridges start the battle weakened. If a fighter ends a move or disengage action with the centre of their base on a weakened bridge, after that action, roll a dice. On a 1, the bridge is said to have collapsed. When a bridge collapses, every fighter with the centre of their base on that bridge is taken down one after the other in an order chosen by the player whose turn is taking place. The bridge is then removed. We can use the dungeon terrain in other battles and if you are using any dungeon terrain scenery models in battles that are not dungeon battles, none of the special rules for those models that we've gone through in this video apply. For example, the bridges are simply platforms and the unique dungeon features are either obstacles or low terrain. In the final section of this video, we'll now go through the unique dungeon features. Each unique dungeon feature has its own special rule, so let's go through each feature one at a time, starting with the wall breach. The wall breach must be set up wholly on a dungeon wall, with only the stand of the gallows and debris being allowed to overhang. Parts of the dungeon walls within half inch of the wall breach are considered to be the battlefield floor instead. The arm stash. Add one to the attacks characteristic of attack actions that have a range characteristic of three or less made by fighters within one inch of the arm stash. The Cursed Caskets Roll a dice each time a fighter ends a move action or disengage action within one inch of the Cursed Caskets. On a 1, allocate D6 damage points to that fighter. The Lever The Lever can only be set up within one inch of a sealed dungeon door. A fighter within one inch of the lever can operate it as an action. If they do so, the player controlling that fighter picks one sealed dungeon door within one inch of the lever. That dungeon door is opened. If both lever models are set up, they can be set up within one inch of the same dungeon door or within one inch of different dungeon doors. The Shattered Pillars Each of the two models that make up the Shattered Pillars can be set up anywhere on the battlefield floor more than one inch from any doorways, bridges or other unique dungeon features. Each model is both an obstacle and low terrain. The sewer. The sewer is an entrance tunnel if there are no enemy fighters upon it. The collapsed doorway. 
To set up the collapsed doorway, the player picks one open or sealed dungeon door, removes it from the battlefield and replaces it with a collapsed doorway. The collapsed doorway is both an obstacle and dangerous terrain. Parts of dungeon walls within half inch of the collapsed doorway are considered to be the battlefield floor instead. When placing the collapsed doorway, all of the dungeon doorway must be beneath the model. That takes care of all the unique dungeon features and brings us to the end of part 13 of our How to Play Warcry series. Come and join me for part 14 where we'll go through the dungeon abilities. I hope you found this video helpful. Please join in and comment below with any thoughts or additions you'd like to make. It'd be great to hear from you. The next video in the series will play right after this one in the playlist. And I'll also put links in the description below to every video in the series. Thanks so much for watching. Please like if you like it, subscribe for more Warcry content like this, and don't forget to hit the notification bell to join me next time on Tabletop Skirmish Games. <laughs>